So, okay, how can we use AI in our business? Personally, I think one great way to use AI in your business is to help you with your emails. And now with AI, you know, either using like some some extensions for Safari, for Chrome, or using some some uh, something else, you can you know just install it and basically just you know give the the AI just a little prompt. You know, what, what type of tools are we using here? Yeah. So the one that I like a lot for writing emails called the Chat Sonic. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another Knowledge Bomb episode of Lead to Greatness, where we believe in helping others reach their greatest potential and together change the world. Today on Lead to Greatness, we have Peter Gerges. And if this is your first time, don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button, hit the notification bell, so you won't miss any of these amazing episodes. And if you're on iTunes, go ahead and rate the podcast and leave a review. That helps get the word out to great leaders and entrepreneurs like yourself. Peter is a seasoned digital expert behind Swift Press Support, a game-changing venture offering unparalleled technical support to WordPress website owners. With a rich history as the founder of Grace Digital Solutions, Peter has a proven track record in crafting exceptional websites for diverse clientele from businesses to personal brands. His commitment to excellence is evident in his ability to communicate intricate technical details to non-tech clients, ensuring they achieve their digital goals. Please help me welcome Peter with using AI in your business. This is Cedric Francis, and you're listening to the Lead to Great. leading my business with press support where we help uh, business owners with their website. Uh, I'm married and I have two kids and I'm super excited to be here. When it comes to AI, I'm super passionate about just AI in general. I think that sometimes AI gets a bad rap, but people are like, like, you know, oh, it, it's, it's going to be like, you know, sentient, you know, or, or, or sentient where it has like a consciousness of its own. And some people like you really think of it like as a dark horse. And I think that's that's the same thing with any new technology. You know what I mean? It's like when the internet came about, you know, there were people that were like against that, you know, and there's always that unknown factor. And, you know, things could go multiple ways. But I think there's definitely great ways for us to use AI, uh, whether in the church or in our business or even in our our, our daily lives, just to help us out, uh, to save time, uh, to be more efficient, more effective. I mean, just the possibilities are endless so we can go from anywhere from here. Wow, wow, wow. Hey, so what, what we're going to do, we're going to do a myth buster. How can we use AI in our business? Yeah, sure. So, okay, how can we use AI in our business? Personally, uh-huh. I think one great way to use AI in your business is to help you with your emails. Mm-hmm. Who, Which business person does not have a huge, you know, tower of emails to go through every single day? Yeah. And now with AI, you know, either using like some some extensions for Safari, for Chrome, or using some some uh, something else, you can you know just install it and basically just you know give the the AI just a little prompt, you know, hey reply, say yes, and it'll it'll write everything for you. Like, dear Cedric, thank you so much for having me on your podcast. I love being here with you. You're amazing. You know, whatever it is, and it'll create it like what would take you literally five minutes is now created for you in about five to ten seconds. You edit it. You don't send it right away. You make it. You make some changes, and depending on your prompt, uh, then you you'd be able. It helps you to 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 write out what you want. Okay, hold on, hold on. Before <laughs> we get on to the next one, oh. Uh, what, what type of tools are we using here? Yeah. So the one that I like a lot for writing emails, you can, uh, one of the ones that I like to use is called the Chat Sonic. And so if if you look it up in the Chrome Web Store, I believe they also have it in for Safari and pretty much all the other extensions, whatever browser you're using, they're, they're going to be, they're going to have it. Mm-hmm. And you can get a certain amount for free. So it will definitely cover you, you know, for, for most of your, most of your work that you're doing on your emails. Mm-hmm. And you could try it out and basically it just sits there as an add-on in your email inbox and you just as it sees it it sees also one of the cool things about chat sonic is that it doesn't just take a look at the latest reply but it takes a look at all of the email thread so let's say you're going back and wow. forth with yeah with five ten people and everybody's chiming in and you have one of those email threads that's like 20 responses within seconds it can go back and take a look at all the replies 
understand the context and the most recent reply and create a good reply for you on your behalf. That's simply amazing. Such a time saver. And that is a knowledge bomb, man. You're giving us knowledge nuggets and practical things we can do. And I'm having too much fun here. So you mentioned the email. What is something else? Yeah, absolutely. So when it comes to AI and your and your website, there's going to be a lot of tools, especially WordPress, because WordPress is the most popular website builder in the whole world. Mm -hmm. It it uh, powers more than 800 million websites uh, worldwide, and it's uh, it basically powers 40 percent of the internet websites are on WordPress. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if you use a tool. Uh, that has AI built into it. Like we recommend using um, like WordPress themes that come with AI. And the two most popular ones, WordPress themes that come with AI at the moment are going to be one called Divi and another one called Elementor. So these two, if if you're building a website or having someone build for you, you want to build with, with one of those because as you know, the site is being built for you or if you're doing it yourself, uh, you're going to have an AI assistant on your side and basically, you could just tell it like, hey, you know what? I'm an ice cream shop and I want to, you know, build my homepage. You know, what, what questions do you uh, do you need to have from me so that you can help build me my website? What? And then, oh and then ChatGPT or whatever AI tool is in, in, in those website tools will come back and say, well, what's your address? Uh-huh. Um, and what kind of flavors do you have? And do you have something for kids? And it's going to ask you these questions and then boom, before you know it, it'll tell you like, Hey, put a homepage, put a hero section and put it about this and create this and wow. put the text over here. And there you go. You have a nicely built website for you within just a matter of minutes. Wow. Another knowledge bomb. This is amazing. Listen, you're talking about websites. Let's talk about this. How critical is the role of websites hosting as far as the website performance? And what should business be looking for when choosing a hosting provider? Yeah, I love this question, Cedric, because it's critical to your SEO. So SEO stands for search engine optimization. Basically, it matters based on how well your website is doing. Google is going to either recommend or not recommend your website. And we know that Google like has like an astounding amount of the search, you know. So if basically Google doesn't recommend you, if you're not popping up, you're not getting any traffic, you know, as compared to like Microsoft Edge, Bing, you know, Yahoo, all these places. So the number one thing that people should be looking for when looking for a hosting is speed. That's so critical because Google cares so much about speed because if people are coming on your site and they're waiting, you know, five, six seconds, even though it might not sound like a long time, but, but for page to load, people are going to get close that tab so fast. So what you need to do is to have a fast web host that can, you know, make sure that your website is is being loaded quickly. And that way you're also, Google is going to recommend you because they see, hey, you know what, Cedric's website, it's fast, it's blazing, you know, yeah, we can trust it. We can send that people there and they're not going to click away because wow. Google is in, is in the business of recommending places and they could see what people are doing, you know. Did you know, Cedric, that people that even Google can tell, like, if you went to a search result, you know, you're searching Google, you clicked somewhere, and you clicked that back button, they measure that. That, hey, wow. Cedric went somewhere, and he came back after five seconds. That's telling us that that search, re- that result, wasn't that great of a click. Wow. Next, we're going to decrease it in the ranks, and we're going to give him something better. So everything Google is measuring. Wow, 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 wow. That's crazy. And I'm telling you, I'm taking notes because you're saying a lot of things that I am not even aware of as an entrepreneur. And I believe, I personally believe I'm listening to you. I'm like, wow, this sets me at a disadvantage, you know, for the things I don't know. I want you to talk about this. Maybe if you have any affiliates with any of these website hosts, you know, just letting us know that or whatever up front. But I want you to kind of name some of the website hosts that you highly recommend. Yeah, sure. And I, and I love that. And I'll do complete transparency. So I, I do have, you know, a couple of affiliates, but regardless whether I had an affiliate relationship with them or not, I would uh-huh. still be recommending them. And uh-huh. the reason why I am an affiliate for them is because I love them and I use them for myself and for my clients. So I, I really like SiteGround a lot. So SiteGround is a great web host, uh, quite affor- affordable, and they're just wonderful and fantastic. And they have very fast uh, web host. And also I like uh, Hostinger, 
So host insurer is even more affordable than site ground. And you know something, uh, Cedric, one of the things that maybe we can delve into as we're talking about hosting is that maybe we can talk about also like the different types of hosting, because I think that would be also beneficial. Okay. So you have three different types of hosting. All right. And it's going to be a different price points. I'm going to help break this down for all of our uh, entrepreneurs uh, on the podcast. So the, the, the first type of hosting is you're going to have shared hosting. This is like entry level. All right. So this is like your, your this is going to be your cheapest. Right. So think about it like that. It's kind of like your your freeway. What's what's the most congested freeway that you have in Houston? I-45. The I-45. OK, so the I-45 is like our uh, I-405 here in Los Angeles. Uh, it is a nightmare. All right. Uh, yeah, sure. You can hop on there on the weekends and and, and you'll you'll be able to go. You know, you'll be fine. But yeah. you, if there's rush hour, you're, you're going to be stuck in traffic. Yes, sir. <laughs> and, and that's kind of what shared hosting is. Yeah, it's cheap for a reason. Sure, you can get on there and it'll it'll give you a website and you'll sometimes you'll have it fast. But hey, if there's congestion because you have neighboring websites on the same server, mm. then you can it's gonna slow you down. Wow. So yeah, that that web hosting that you see for $299, $399, $599, it's cheap for a reason, is because yeah, everybody else is on there at the same time. And yeah. so sometimes it's gonna slow down. Yeah. So that's the first type. The second type is called virtual private server. And that's going to be a little bit more expensive and it's going to be your, where you're going to be like, hey, you know what? I'm just going to be by myself on a server or maybe I'm going to have a fewer number of people on the server with me. And so therefore you're buying uh, more space, you know, okay. so that you can have be able to, to get that traffic and going and moving and no problems. That'd be equivalent to being on a tollway or something like that. Yeah, I love that analogy. Yeah. You, you got it. You hit the nail on the head, Cedric. Yeah. And then the third type is called cloud hosting. And this is like the creme de la creme. This is like, you know, hey, you know what? The freeways aren't good for me. I need a helicopter. Mm. Okay. <laughs> and it. I'm going to hover over and go over that freeway. That's yeah. what cloud hosting is. And the advantage of it is that, you know, like Thanksgiving, when you're eating that, that Thanksgiving meal, the best thing you can do for yourself is wear some elastic pants, you know, that, that can expand with you. Yeah. And that's what the cloud hosting does. <laughs> <It expands. laughs> As you need more traffic, let's say, for example, you were getting, you're going to go like on Oprah or you're going to go on something where you're going to get featured on, and you're going to get an amazing amount of traffic. I received that. I received that, by the way. Go ahead. <laughs> Harvey, whoever, you know, if you, if you go on their web, on their sites and then all of a sudden they refer back to your website, now all of a sudden you have this flurry of traffic that's hitting your website all one time. Mm -hmm. For sure, if you're on shared hosting or VPS hosting, your website will go down. It will not be able to take that much traffic. Wow. Right. Because it's just too many people all at the same time hitting your website. But the cloud hosting can expand. And that's why it has the elastic pants on is that when it when you need more memory, you need more CPU processors to be able to beef up and hold you up. The, the cloud hosting is that it expand. It can expand in the cloud. And those are the different types of web hosts. Man, <laughs> knowledge bombs man this is so amazing peter i really i'm, I'm really enjoying this very great, great great info I, I i want to ask this before we move on on this category here what will you put godaddy or let's say web.com godaddy and web.com are going to be more for the general public you know what i mean people that want to do like smaller projects and and here's the thing cedric is that like let's Whoever's in business, like you got to think about where are you going down in the future? All right. So think about the future at the same time. If you're going to go and you're going to start off with these like, you know, smaller web, web hosts, like $299, $399 per month. And then after that, it's going to be sometimes slow. Sometimes people are going to come to your website and it's going to be down. Or you have, you've got bad neighbors who've got viruses and they're sharing it and putting on yours. Like think about mm. the detriment to your business. Yeah. Like if you're, if it's like, if maybe if your, your child is, wants to create like a hobby website, it's good for them. But you know, for your business where, where money is at stake and you need to have customers and have a good experience and you need, you know, that's critical. I would say invest the extra money, just a few more dollars a month and get the next level of web host so that you can be on, on a good web host that has a good reputation that's going to treat you well and where your website's not going to go down and it's also going to be fast. And I think that's the, the better way to go for people who are business owners and entrepreneurs. Give me your recommendation. Yeah. For, for web hosts, if you're a business entrepreneur, I would say start off, definitely look at SiteGround. 
So uh, they're fantastic. I think look at the higher web hosting accounts and plans from Hostinger. I think they're very good too. I think DreamHost and Bluehost, they're not bad, but only if you go on the higher scale accounts as well. Uh, look at the, at the business plans, but um, th that's who I, who I would recommend. Thank you, Peter. This is really, really, really helpful. So you talked about the business aspects of AI. When, when you're dealing with AI, how, how is this beneficial in everyday living? Yeah, in everyday living, I think it's fantastic because you know what, Cedric? A lot of people are using it instead of Google now. So because when you go on Google and let's say, for example, you're searching for like, you know, hey, you know, um, I've got a headache. You know, what should I take? What 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 Google is going to do is that it's going to look at the articles and basically it's going to look at, give you like, you know, one to two sentences from an article and give you as the top result, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's hit and miss and sometimes you need more information. But for example, now you can go to the AI tools like ChatGBT, Claude2 or any, any of these other AI tools and say, hey, give me the five best AI, uh, give me the five best headache uh, medicines, compare and contrast them, what are their side effects, and which one should I take if I am a 48 male and I have diabetes, mm. right? Wow. So yeah, yeah, yeah. unless Google had somebody already created an article with those exact specifications, you wouldn't be able to answer it. You wouldn't be able to get a good answer. You know, you would yeah. be searching and having to go to multiple links, multiple websites, gathering the research, putting it maybe in a spreadsheet, because it's really yeah. important information. It's about your health, right? Yeah. But now... Within a few seconds, you can have the AI tool do this very complex thing that's very personal, very specific to you and give you the answer within a matter of seconds. And then it can remember it. And then you can ask further questions about it. So let's take, for example, our, our example of, hey, I need the best headache medicine that's good for a 40-year-old and that for somebody who has diabetes. And then say, well, uh, what if I also have insomnia? You know, then it can come back in and, and give you some more answers, you know? Yeah. Or, uh, what, what if I have kidney disease or whatever it is? And that's just the health course. Now. I'm just talking about personal. You can ask the AI basically anything that you want, tailored for you, custom for you, and it'll come back and give you an answer. And this is the part that I kind of want to elaborate on too, is that part of the reason why AI has, is yes, sure, it's been running like wildfire, but part of the reason why people don't really fully know how to use it is because basically what you put in is what you get out. Mm. So if, if you're not inputting the right prompts, you don't know how to use it, you don't know how to take advantage of it, you might not see like all the advantages and you'll be limited. But gotcha. once you learn about the prompting and how to actually, you know, uh, ask the, the stuff that you want and to be able to get the right output, then it's a game changer. So prompting sounds like from what I'm hearing from you, prompting is like uh, speaking this language. A hundred percent. Prompting is like one of the new skills. People are talking about like, hey, bringing up courses about how to do AI prompting yeah. uh, because really it's it's all about the prompt and to understand what kind of language the AI can use or is more effective with it to give you uh, these phenomenal outputs. Oh, wow, wow, man, this is good. This is good. And, and 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 I don't know, I'm listening to what you're saying right now. And again, we're not even 12 months into this thing really going public with uh, chat GPT. So I'm like, man, I can just imagine. What do you see the digital landscape in the next five years with all this emerging technology such as uh, AI and also VR? Yeah, sure. So I do see that AI is going to change everything that we do or a lot of things it's gonna it's already you know going into all the different industries and all the different you know businesses and just going creeping into basically all the different areas of our lives because it is so useful and it is so helpful yeah. and it, even in medicine you know imagine in medicine it's so it's such a wonderful tool because you know people can basically you know you can have a doctor that can help diagnose you correctly you know and not have any misdiagnosis so That's in that insane. sense it's yeah, yeah a fantastic tool yeah. And I think that uh, it is going to be, it is going to revolutionize everything. I think uh, VR, you know, going to also be helpful, but the problem with VR as opposed to AI and v VR is basically virtual reality. And so there's, there's different parts. There's virtual reality, there's augmented reality, but basically it's those, those headsets that sometimes you see people putting on and basically they can see inside the screen. And so Apple is going to be releasing one next year. Yes. Um, for the first time, and you, do you remember Cedric how much it costs? So almost four thousand dollars, right? Thirty-four hundred, I think it yes. is. Yes. <laughs> so 
astronomical, but so you could see the the, uh, the reason why the technology is so expensive is because it's still at the early stages. So, and the way that Apple, of course, wants to create it, and wants to create it like to be absolutely an amazing experience. Yeah. But you can put on basically these goggles, and either you can have it see like inside the room that you're in, or it can be fully immersive where you don't see anything and you're in a completely different environment. It's insane. Yeah, and then you can do you can do whatever. You, if you want to play games, you can play games. If you want to do computing, you can do computing. You want to type up an email, you can just speak it, you know, and it'll type it's for insane, you. Insane, man. You'll, you'll see a little document, you know, inside your the little goggles, and it'll be written for you. And it'll just say send, and it'll just send. I'll say edit yes. it, you can edit it. Oh so you can goodness. do all this amazing, amazing stuff. Uh, but I don't. I think because of the, the technology for VR is still expensive, and Apple is not the only player here. Um, Meta has been around for quite a while in this game with the Quest headset, the Oculus. Mm -hmm. You can get theirs. They have different headsets, but you can get them for about 300 to 500 bucks. And they're they're much more affordable. But um, we don't know yet what Apple's version is going to be like. But I don't think it's going to be massive adoption yet because... You know, who wants to be on the, with this big old huge set of goggles on their head? You know, that's yeah. kind of a drawback. Yeah. But once the technology gets better, where it's just going to be glasses, like me and you are wearing glasses right now. Yeah. Imagine the glasses are just like this and then the VR is just like this. Amazing. And it's like, it's very convenient, right? Yeah. Then it'll, it'll get mass adopted. Let's talk about Swiss press support. I want to talk about your business. Uh, how... Did it come to fruition? And let's talk a little bit about it. My surface support, what it does basically is think about kind of like your house. You know, sometimes, you know, when you're in your house, you know, you got your bathroom and sometimes it gets plugged up and you need to have, you know, a plumber go in there and kind of, you know, plug up your toilet. Uh, and so it's basically we're, we're the plumbers for your WordPress website. You know, you got a problem with it, you need a fix, you know, you can, you can come to us. Uh, and sometimes, you know, you're living in your house and you want to do a kitchen remodel, you know, and it's time to to bring out the new. And so you want to uh, to do something new with with your with your your house, your kitchen, a remodel. So we'll do that too. Also for your website, we'll remodel your website just like uh, you might have in your house. Yeah. And then finally, sometimes you know, in your business, you need to have, tell people about your sales. You do a garage sale, maybe, or so you need to go put out in the streets posters, signs, tell people, "Hey, garage sale over here," yeah. you know. And so we'll do that too. You know, get your website uh, ready for you to have your sale and to sell stuff on it, and to tell people, "Hey, we're selling stuff." You know, this is what we have to offer. Uh, so that's what surplus support does. It's basically everything for your WordPress website to help you uh, manage and continue to grow in, in your in your business. I've had basically four businesses that I started. Two of them completely failed and two of them succeeded by God's grace. Yeah. And so I launched my first business, you know, amazing. I thought I was going to rake it in $3,000 like that. And guess how much money I made? How much? <laughs> Seventeen dollars and fifty cents. It was oh my gosh, a col a colossal failure. Yeah. And I was just like, oh my gosh, you know what are we gonna do? I still got these bills. What I what well, I don't know how I'm gonna get out of get out of this. So I ended up hiring a coach, and the coach came and he checked out my website and and he says, aha, I know what you did wrong. You were like pricing all of your products very low. So nobody really believed that you're like a time management expert. Uh, so nobody was buying from you. So now you need to go on the high, high end and you need to go super high end and sell coaching for $10,000 for just one session with you or your course, your epic, amazing you know, program. I said, yes, that is it. I will <laughs> make a program for $10,000 and I will sell time <laughs> management techniques and help CEOs and all these people uh, to, to, uh, to buy from me and I will help them with their time management and productivity. So I went ahead and I did, I worked for another like, three or four months and relaunched it. And I paid like $10,000 for somebody to coach me on how to create this program. So I cost me $10,000 and then I launched it. And then again, crickets. Mm. Nobody bought my $10,000 program. Nobody even watched my webinar. It was a colossal failure. And I was like, oh my gosh, you know, what am I going to do? Yeah. And so that was two for two. And I, I was willing to give up, you know, but my wife was so amazing. You know, when she saw me down, she was like, honey, I believe in you. You're going to make it, you know, keep on trying. I know God has something in store for us. Uh, don't give up. 
And you know, that's the importance of having, you know, an incredible supportive partner in Absolutely. your life, yeah. you know? And so she, she came by my side and that was so helpful. And then right at that time, I knew uh, an owner of a marketing agency who was killing it. You know, he just was, had lots of clients, you know, multiple seven figures. And, and he knew that I was good with websites. So he said, Hey, Peter, you know, can you come and do white label servicing for my marketing company? And I was like, what's that? He's like, basically, it's like, I need somebody to be on staff, but I don't want to pay you on staff and pay taxes and do all the stuff. So can you offer your services as if, you know, you're just doing it my, for, for, for my marketing agency. And that way it's a win-win. It's a real thing called white label service. And it's also like for you, like if you want Cedric to offer like website services to all the community, you could do that too. hire us as a white label service. So it is uh, a thing. So I said, sure. And that was it. That that's what did it. And you know what? He gave me plenty of work. He had so many clients and I was just doing work for, for him as if I was their marketing agency as staff person. And that's how it was born. And I basically got on more and more clients myself. And that's how my, my business started. Well, I think one of the things too, that one of the nuggets that I hope, you know, our, our listeners will get away from, from my journey and from my two failures, you know, and my two successes uh, is that, uh, you know, really, you should follow your calling. Yeah. Do what you're called to do. I can tell you for one thing for sure, I was not called to do, to create time management techniques and productivity. I was not called to do, to do high-end business coaching for busy CEOs. That was not my calling. My calling was the website. And I think I love websites. I, I mean, I, I breathe them, I eat them, I, I sleep, I do everything with websites so. and it's a joy. And so now when I, when I go out, come and do my, my business stuff, you know, and my, I work on with my clients, I, I have, to, I'm so joyful. I'm so happy that I get to help them with their businesses and to see them thrive. And it keeps me fueled. Yeah. But I don't think I could say if, uh, that I would, I'd feel the same way about those other businesses if I, if they had been successful, which they felt for a reason. Yeah. And Peter, that's the thing. I mean, everything since the time we 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 got on, we got on this interview, I mean, I can it, it's just coming out of you. I mean, you're just excited, and you're energized over something that most people can care less about. And just imagine this, Peter. Imagine you. What are you doing? You're doing what you're doing. And you love to do it. Imagine somebody is doing something, and they went on YouTube or they went on and they seen that. Oh man, you can start a great business by doing websites, but they really don't like websites. You're gonna kill the game, and they're gonna struggle because they don't have any passion in it because if you soon as peter show up i mean that, that the client ain't listening to nobody else i mean because you have that energy behind it and people believe you because you believe you so i would encourage you let's lead, lead to greatness listen follow your passion there's a passion that's something you are naturally good at i mean it may take a it may take three months, six months, may even take a year. Take your time and find what you're doing, what you love to do, and find that problem. And you become the solution to the problem that you see. Become the solution. That's all business is. It's just problem solving. So become the solution, just like my brother Peter did. Peter, great job. And thank you for what you do. Thank you for being on the Lead to Greatness podcast. This is so awesome. Uh, I'm so honored, man. And your, and your questions are just phenomenal. And you know what? I think Cedric, what oozes out on this podcast interview is how much you really care about the listeners and how much you really want to see them succeed because you can tell that in the type of questions that you asked and, and the feedback that you get. So I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart just for caring so greatly and truly wanting to, to serve the listeners. Wow. Thank you, Peter. Appreciate you, sir. Thank you. If someone wants to connect with you and what you're doing, where should they go? Yeah, I think the best place to go is to go to my website. You can go to swiftpresssupport.com. It's going to be there. You know, you can contact us through the contact form if you need anything. There's all information. I got articles that we write about from my team every single day about websites and stuff. And if you need anything, you know, hey, instead of uh, nerding out or geeking yourself, you know, you can, you can talk to us about whatever you need help with. Wow, 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 wow. On behalf of the Lead to Greatness community, I want to thank you so very much, Peter, for taking time out of your busy schedule and adding oh, value to us all. Thank you, Cedric. It was such a pleasure to be here. Oh, man. Thank, thank, you. thank you for joining us today on the Lead to Greatness podcast. So remember, if you help others reach their greatest potential, together we can change the world. Peace. Peace.